we've got this lovely little ocean painting. Um, it will be, we're going to kind of work from top to bottom here. We'll be painting in the sky, these clouds, um, and then the water, and then the beach. So we'll just kind of go top to bottom. We might go back and add some details, but mostly um, this will be kind of a one layer kind of situation. We're going to use lots of the watercolor um, sort of aspects to get these like nice blends and, and spreads and stuff like that that we get. So yeah, I'll be referring back to this. So you can take a screenshot of this now, but I will be referring back to this as we paint. So don't worry, this is not the last time you'll see it. Okay, take your screenshots so you can refer to it if you want. Three, two, one, cool. Okay, so my paper here that I'm working with is Strathmore watercolor paper. Um, this is just what I use for paint and sips. I have all of my materials recommendations in, a, in the link in my bio. There's a tab called art supply recommendations. So if you're looking for the supplies that I use, that's where you'll find that. Um, my paints are Windsor Newton paints, and then my paint brushes are Princeton Neptune. You can use whatever you have for any of this. I would recommend you use watercolors and watercolor paper because that's the that's what I'm going to kind of lead you through. That's what my instructions are going to be specific for. But if you'd like to be creative and use something else, you are totally welcome to. But these are the brushes I use. I'll probably use like a bigger one and a smaller one. I probably won't even need the smaller one today. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do is uh, take a paintbrush in our water cup here and put a little drop of water in each of our watercolor pans. You can do this whether you're working with wet watercolors out of a tube or dry watercolors. This just helps us to start dissolving the paint and it gets us ready to use it later. So this is what we do first so that we can use it. You can use a spray bottle if you want to, that might be more efficient, but I've just always done it this way, so this is what I'm going to stick to. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I promise it just takes practice. Anybody can be good at watercolor painting. All right, so once you have your uh, paints with some water in them, I could have said that better, um, we're gonna start by um, figuring out where our horizon line is going to be. So in my painting here, you can see that it's just a little bit over halfway up the painting. So this is a little bit more than halfway. So just kind of find halfway on your painting and then go maybe just a touch above that. And instead of drawing with our pencil today, we are going to use tape. And this is so that we get this really nice straight line for the horizon, which is super important with water paintings. Um, for like landscape paintings and stuff, you can kind of get away with not having a super straight across horizon line, but water is completely flat. So um, we do need a, as straight of a horizon line as we can get, and that's why using the tape helps. So if you want to be really exact about it, you can measure um, the distance that you want. So I've got about eight inches um, tall here, so I'll probably go like four and a quarter the way up on each side. If you don't want to bother with measuring, you can just eyeball it, and that is fine. Corner on that side. And then I'm going to use my tape. And I just think that this is a much easier and low stress way to get a nice straight across horizon line especially when you need it to be straight. So we're going to put the tape on the bottom half of this because we're painting the sky first. So you want to put the tape underneath where the horizon line is like this. Make sure you use your nail to kind of press it down so that the water doesn't get under there. Okay. So there's our horizon line. And we also need to do just a small pencil sketch of where we want these clouds to be. We really only need the kind of top outline of these clouds. So I'm going to take my pencil and these are going to take up just a little bit more than half of the paper here. And I'm just going to kind of make these little fluffy shapes, you know, kind of across the horizon line. I'll show that closer up as well. It does not need to look like anything in particular. It's just like a little, <clears throat> excuse me, a little wiggly shape across the sky. Okay, so this is what it should look like now. Something like this. You can have your own cloud shape. 
doesn't have to look like mine. And I do just want to mention if you guys want to double tap the screen, that does help me with the algorithm. So if you're just watching or if you have a spare minute, just double tap the screen. You can do it as many times as you want. Sends me likes, helps me out with the eluse, ever elusive TikTok algorithm, you know? <laughs> My allergies are doing much better. I don't know if you can tell, I just had that thought that I'm not sniffing it quite as much. I've been on the Claritin. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I like to rip my paper tape, my painter's tape in half. Well, it's so big. Like, at the hardware store only had like these massive, these are probably like an inch and a half or something, rolls, and I really don't need that. I just need the straight edge on the corner, so I always rip them in half. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with painting the sky. So the first thing that we need is a nice sky blue color because like I said, we're painting from top to bottom. So we just need to mix this color for now. I like to mix together a couple of blues that I have in my palette. I like to mix together ultramarine and um, phthalo blue. But if you just have a nice sky blue in your palette that you want to use, that'll be perfectly fine. And we do want to water it down a little bit. We don't want the sky to be the most intense blue color that you've ever seen. We want to add some water so that it's a slightly lighter color. And there's our blue. Hang on, let me get some swatch paper so I can give you these, show you these colors. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. So here's the blue that I've mixed so far. This is also a good way to test what your color looks like. That might be a little bit too watered down here. I might add a little bit more blue back into that. But this is a good way to test what your color looks like before you put it on your painting. Just get some extra paper and test her out. So i just add a little bit more paint. Let's see, there you go. So you can tell that that's a little bit stronger, just subtle difference, but it's a little bit more opaque now. So I think I'll use that. All right. And one last thing before we get started is to lightly erase, if you drew heavy with those cloud lines, lightly erase what you just did because this is where we want a nice white outline and seeing those pencil lines underneath is not helping us with that. So I like to erase so I can just kind of barely see where it is. You might not be able to see it now, but I can see it on my paper. Lightly erase and then we can start filling in that top part. So I'm going to take my brush, you feel free to just watch this as well and I will give you time. I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to start at the top with this blue color, filling in all of this area. And then once I get to the section with the clouds, I'm going to kind of use some stippling motions. I'm just kind of picking up and putting down my brush pretty quickly so that I can get this nice textured edge of these clouds. Fill in the rest. I'm just kind of wiggling my brush really fast and letting it give me lots of cool textures for the edges of those clouds. Something like that. Make sure everything is covered and then leave it alone. The eraser is a kneaded eraser. You can find it on Amazon and or at any art store and I really like it better than regular erasers. I can explain to you why in a minute. And then you can leave your clouds just like this if you want to. Um, however, if you want to, you can take a clean, slightly damp brush, so take off a lot of the water on it, and then you can go while this is still kind of wet and just soften gently those edges between the sky and the clouds. So I'm just taking a damp brush and just carefully, just using the tip of the brush, softening the edges. So you can see that that kind of blurs it out just a little bit, makes it a little bit less harsh. And I think it makes it just, it looks a little bit softer. So that is optional. If you like the look of how your clouds are now, that's fine too. Just giving you a little tip. Okay. You can only do this while the paint is still wet. So make sure you make your decision and then do it or just let it dry. There we go. 
Don't overdo that. We just want it a little bit softer. Okay, there's our sky. <laughs> and we need to put in our clouds. Well, we got 2.6 thousand on here. Hello, everyone. Okay. How's this going for everybody? Um, I'm gonna keep that. If you're painting with me, let me know how, he's, how it's going. If I can move on or if you're ready, if you need another minute, let me know. Love it, thank you. Thank you so much. Good. Thank you, can move on. Ready, okay, cool. I'm seeing some readies and I'm not seeing any panicked weights. So we're gonna go ahead and move on. So the next thing that we need to do is fill in these cloud details. So we need this kind of purpley, um, almost gray color that's going to be kind of the background and then the shadows of the clouds. All right, so I'm gonna keep my sky blue color that I just used and stay with me here. We're gonna add a little bit of brown, <laughs> just a little bit at a time, a little bit of brown and maybe a little bit of red if you need help getting it to more, yeah, brown and red. Just a little bit of each at a time The brown will help you get to more of a gray color instead of a purple color. If you just mixed in red, you would get to a purple color. And we don't want purple, we want gray. So we're adding brown as well to that sky blue color and adding some water as well because we want this to be a really light color. So it looks dark in my palette right here, but you'll see when I swatch it, it's quite light. So there's that color. It should be this kind of grayish purple color so to the, again, to that sky blue, you're adding brown and red. A little bits at a time until you come up with this kind of gray color. I do this every Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Okay. So that's our color that we're using. Make sure you swatch it on a different piece of paper so that you know how dark or light it's going to be. And then we are going to start in with these details. So we're gonna fill in kind of the top, the bottom, maybe third of the cloud section, just with this straight color. And then we're gonna kind of add it in little spots in these clouds. And then we're gonna use some water to kind of blend that out. So that'll make sense in a minute when I do it. Feel free to watch if you want, and then you can do it after me. So I'm gonna take this color tilting this just a little bit so I can paint easier. And I'm gonna fill this in, in the bottom third or so. And then I'm just gonna start adding some little sections, just do this kind of randomly with this same color up into the clouds. We don't wanna to touch anything near the top because those are gonna be the lightest section sections. So keep this gray color kind of down a little bit and then that looks a little bit psychotic so you're going to clean off your brush dry it off a little bit and then use that clean brush to start blending this out and i'm using kind of little circles similar strokes to what we did for the outside of the clouds clean off your brush again dry it off some of the way and we're just going to blend all of this together we want to do this quickly so that it doesn't dry Make sure it won't dry before you have a chance to kind of blend it out. But you can see that that starts to kind of look a little bit more like the cloud shadows. So blending, blending, blending all the way across. It's good to at least get all of it blended and then you can go back and blend some parts more and leave some parts. We don't want to take too much time working our way across because like I said it will dry depending on the humidity in your area it'll dry slower or faster okay so once we've got it all blended we should have some sort of textures in there and the last thing that we can do is dry off the brush all the way so make sure it's really dry on your paper towel 
And then we can use that, again, while this is still wet, to take away some more of that color. So if you find that you need some more texture in there, dry off, all the, dry off your brush all the way, and you can get even more texture by lifting that extra pigment. And this will look differently every time you do it. You'll see that this looks differently from the other painting that I did, just because it is kind of a weird texture and it'll do different things every time. Okay, let me know how that's going for you. You can keep kind of swirling it and adding some different textures and things. As long as it's still kind of wet, you can still keep changing it slightly. Okay, so there's our clouds. Fun. <laughs> I'm going to leave it alone. Let me know how this is going for you. You can see here when I compare these two, oh, hello. You can see how differently these look from each other. Slightly different colors. Um, this is different paper, so it kind of acts differently with the watercolor. But neither of them are they're just not better or worse. Just different. So the bottom gray is supposed to be a nearly straight line. So that's when, um, so this bottom line here, um, that's what I did. It doesn't have to be. In your world, it, it can be um, straight or curvy, whatever you want but it's just kind of where the clouds ended and kind of in the back here, it's meant to be more, um, it's meant to be like kind of rain, rainy, I don't know. <laughs> Knowing when to stop, exactly. I do, I do paint with acrylics, but I don't do them live. Um, I've always just done these lives with watercolor. Um, and it's honestly just what I'm used to now, and you can really get a watercolor painting done in an hour, so. And I feel more comfortable teaching watercolor than I do acrylic, so that's that's the reason for that. Also, thank you for all the likes. We're up to 66,000, which is awesome. Okay, and when you're done with your clouds, you can take off this piece of tape, carefully, gently, Use a hairdryer if it starts ripping your paper. And there we have our nice straight across horizon line. Very pretty. Okay, so we are gonna wait like a couple of minutes to let all of this dry because we're gonna put a piece of tape on the opposite side now, so over what we just painted. So we wanna make sure everything is dry before we do that. So if you have any art related questions, feel free to ask right now. Um, I will take just a minute or two to let this all dry and then we'll move on. What do likes do? They just help me out with the algorithm. So it pushes the live to more people, um, gets me a little bit more exposure on my account, which I appreciate. Helps me with my business. <laughs> kind of paints are you using? I'm using Windsor and Newton paints. Is there a way to soften the line between the sky and the clouds? Um, you can try, It's since it's probably dry for you, um, you can try to take a damp brush and kind of swirl it a little bit. It might not work all that well because now that it's dry, you won't necessarily be able to soften that anymore. Um, but you can give that a try. Is it crucial to use certain paper? Yes, so you, the brand doesn't necessarily matter. People have their favorites, but you do need to use watercolor paper for watercolor paintings. It's really thick paper and it's meant to absorb a lot of water. If you just use like printer paper or drawing paper, it'll fall apart. So you just have to use specifically watercolor paper. Are you on vacation? Nope, I'm back from vacation. I was on vacation for two weeks in May. Any tips for working with brushes that have the water reservoir in them? I've got a couple of videos on that on my TikTok if you want to kind of dig back through my um, watercolor tutorials playlist. 
Do you ever do florals for your lives? Yep, I have before. I've got a few of those um, on my Instagram. How much did those paints cost? They cost um, probably too much for paints to cost, <laughs> I think. And I've spent money on them since because I run out of colors and then I buy more. So um, I don't know. I bought probably $120 to start for those paints. But I am a professional artist, so that's how I justify that. <laughs> what cheap watercolor can you suggest for beginners? Um, again, for all my um, supply recommendations, I have the link in my bio. That's So if you click on the link, there's a tab called Art Supply Recommendations, and that is where all my recommendations are. I've got lots of things at different price points. It's not all expensive stuff. I've got stuff that is good for beginners, too. Do you do oil paint? Yes, I do. Um, yeah, so I upload the lives onto Instagram. Same handle as TikTok. Um, and that's where you can go find them later. Of course. Can you share your palette? Like, which specific colors on your palette? Sure. I'll, give my, I'll do my best. Let me clean this off so I don't make a mess. Okay. So this is white. I think this is like lemon yellow. This is like a... I'm not going to come up with like the exact... Um, Colors, I think that's like cadmium yellow, cadmium free orange, yellow ochre, raw sienna, burnt sienna. Um, this is probably cadmium red, alizarin crimson, magenta, sap green, hooker's green, turquoise, uh, cerulean, Windsor blue, which is like a phthalo blue, ultramarine, indigo, purple, um, Payne's gray, Van Dyke brown, and then black. I think that's all of the colors that are in there. And I, the set came with 12 colors. I don't remember which ones it came with, but I added um, another six or something like that to be as colors that like I knew I would use. So it's Windsor and Newton. Are there platforms that recommend where one can sell artwork? Um, I use Etsy, so that's the only one I can really like talk about. They are, it's good for, like, it's convenient. It's very user-friendly for me. They take care of, like, state taxes, and, um, you know, it's fairly easy for me to upload things. They do take a lot of my um, money and fees. <laughs> so, um, you know, there's a plus and minus for that, but any website that you use will take some of your fees if you're selling something. So there's just kind of different um, opinions about that. Nope, I don't stretch my paper before painting. I just tape it. And I overdid my clouds. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, you'll know for next time. You'll only know... Um, you'll only know how to not overdo it if you overdo a lot of paintings, and I say that from experience. Yes, 101,000 likes. That's awesome. Thank you, guys. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on. Thank you all for the questions. If we have time later, then I'll answer some more. But now your painting should be dry. If it's not, use a hairdryer, dry it up. And we're going to take another piece of tape took the other half of my tape that I ripped in half, and we are going to put it the opposite way on our horizon line. So now we don't have to worry about the other side of our horizon line, and we can paint the ocean as we see fit. Okay, so we do need one more pencil mark down here, and that's just where the ocean kind of transitions into the sand. So this is just kind of a straight line across, more or less. I'm not using a ruler or anything. It can be wavy. But it's about, um, I don't know, it's toward the bottom of the paper. You can judge how much sand you want in your painting. It's about, mine is about a third. The bottom third will be sand. So again, you want a really light pencil mark that just tells you where to stop putting the paint down. And then I'm going to lightly erase that. No mistakes in art. I would say there can be mistakes in art. However, it's not like making a mistake is not a bad thing. Bob Ross calls it a happy accident. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. You can make a mistake and sometimes it makes the painting into something that you didn't want it to be, but it at least lets you learn something, you know? Mistakes are how we learn. <laughs> okay. So now that we have our thing kind of mapped out, we're going to mix our colors. And 
we need two colors for the ocean. We need a dark blue, which is going to go at the horizon and it'll be these kind of shadow areas. And then we need a nice light turquoise. So we're gonna mix these two colors. For your dark blue, I have an indigo color that I'm going to use that is one of my favorite colors in the world. Um, so I'll probably just be using this. If you do not have an indigo, mix together black and blue. We just need a dark blue. And I will swatch this for you. So there's our nice dark blue. This is my favorite color in my palette. Just look how pretty. This has been my favorite watercolor color since high school. Okay, and then we need our turquoise color. I do also have a turquoise color in my palette, which I got on purpose because it is um, nice to have a turquoise. But if you don't have one, take your whatever like sky blue that you used and add a little bit of yellow at a time and or green. And that should get you pretty close to a turquoise color. And we want both these colors to be pretty strong. So add enough water that they flow, but you want them both to be pretty saturated. So don't add too much water to each, okay? Let's see if I can get a little bit more on there. There we go, so there's our turquoise color. And I love how these look together. Again, the link in my bio has all of the supplies that I use, art supply recommendations tab. Oh yeah, that's a good suggestion too, to copy link. Okay, look at how pretty those two look together. I just love those two. All right, so once you have your colors together, I will kind of lead you through this again. I uh, will go first. If you want to watch me and then do it, you can. We are going to start with our darker blue and we're going to start at the horizon line and work our way forward. So I'm going to start by just putting down this darker blue at the horizon line because we have our tape there. We don't need to worry about making a straight line, which is good. And I'm using horizontal strokes with this. And as we work toward the bottom of the page, so probably about halfway to the bottom of our ocean section, I'm just going to start spacing out this dark blue. So once I've gotten to halfway, I'm gonna kind of leave the blue alone. It'll kind of look like that. Okay, and then quickly, working quickly, we're going to rinse off our brush and switch to the turquoise color and fill in the gaps. The colors should blend together. Don't worry about that. That's on purpose. And because we laid off the dark blue kind of halfway down, once we get to towards where our pencil line was, it should be mostly turquoise. So down here, we can start into mostly the turquoise. Okay and then paint down to where your line is. And last step is to clean off your brush one more time, dry it off part way, so you still have a little bit of water in there, and then run that across the edge, the bottom edge where you just painted that turquoise so that it blends out into nothingness. That's where we're gonna put the sand later. Okay. Now you can just leave it like this. It'll kind of dry with these fun, weird patterns here. Or if you wanna be a little bit more controlling about it, you can take your brush and dry it off all the way and add, kind of take away some pigment. You can kind of add some texture with these lighter sections. Always go horizontal when you're doing this. Horizontal strokes only. And you can kind of change what the texture looks like with your brush like this while it's still wet. I would not recommend going back and adding any more color I would, if, unless you really feel like you need to. Um, I would just let it dry how it is. You can, you, you can change it a little bit with your brush and then just let it dry. Thank you, I think they're pretty too. Where are your brushes from? I got them from the art store. They're Princeton Neptune brushes, but they are also linked in that Amazon link that I've been talking about. 
I go to the art store for all my supplies. The one that's nearby me is called Plaza um, Art Supplies, but I also use Blick, which has a good online store. So I would recommend if you can get yourself to an art store, but if you can't, or if you don't feel like it, um, that Amazon link that I have is another resource for you for finding art supplies. Looks like the texture you added just faded away. So we don't need it to be like that obvious. Um, I used it mostly to kind of control where the colors were going. But when I zoom in, you can see those lighter sections there are all places that I just took off the paint. So it, it is subtle for sure. We're not trying to make this a super obvious texture. It's just meant to be subtle. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna let that dry. What about using acrylic paper for watercolor? That will also not work. Acrylic paper is not meant for the amount of water that's in watercolor. Um, it is meant to hold paint. So it is meant to hold acrylic paint. So you can try it if you want to. I will never discourage you from experimenting, but um, watercolors are generally meant for watercolor paper. <laughs> Thank you. What tripod do you use? Uh, it's just a tripod from Amazon. Kind of masking tape. I just get masking tape from the hardware store. It's scotch masking tape and it's the brown one. Yeah, you can, you can test out different masking tapes. I always go to the hardware store. Um, art stores have masking tape too, but I feel like they, it's always a little bit more expensive at um, the art store, so I always just go to the hardware store for my tape. You can get a lot of inexpensive art supplies from the hardware store, as it turns out. <laughs> okay, are you planning to add land where the masking tape currently is? Nope, the land part is gonna be right here in the, in the bottom. I'm using mixed media paper, it's not lifting the paper so far. That's good. Um, mixed media paper I feel like is like a, it's roulette whether it's gonna hold the watercolor or not. <laughs> I've used some that is just like watercolor and I've also used some that just falls apart immediately. So how do you make it dry faster? Uh, use a hair dryer. <laughs> have you ever done gold leaf? I have not done gold leaf. I have um, metallic watercolors that are mica basically um and those are really pretty they end up quite shiny and reflective and they look pretty high quality but i've wanted to try gold leaf blue painter tape you can definitely try it i just i've found that this one works the best for me thank you do you frame your pieces for etsy no i do not because i know that people have different styles um in their houses and i want the art to be as um, versatile as possible so that you can put it in a frame that matches your own home and also it would increase the cost for the consumer if I were to frame it and ship it with a frame myself. Okay, how long have you been painting? Uh, since I was a child, <laughs> since I was like three years old or so. All right, we're gonna get back to our painting here. We need to add in our sand here in the, in the foreground. We also have a couple of other, um, we're gonna add a few more details to the water and then one more detail to the sand and then we're pretty much done. So we are making our way here. Now the key to mixing a good sand color is to make it lighter than you ever think it should be. <laughs> so we need to add lots of water. So I'm gonna use yellow ochre, which is kind of a natural kind of earthy yellow, kind of a golden yellow color you can see there in my palette. Um, and I might mix a little bit of brown into that just to tone it down a little bit. And then we're going to add just a crap ton of water. <laughs> More than you ever think, because we want to start out with a really light color for sand. I feel like the mistake people make when they're painting beaches in sand is to make the sand yellow. And it is, at least in this painting, it is mostly white. And so you want mostly water, which is a hint of like kind of yellow brown sand color okay so I'm adding a crap ton of water and you can kind of swatch it as you go but I'll show you what this looks like 
you can see how light that is, right? That's like barely any paint. I might add a little bit of color back to that, but that's what we're going for here, that amount of water. <laughs> Add a little bit of pigment pigment back into that. Just a touch. Let's watch it again. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So we are going to basically just fill in the bottom of our painting with this. So I'm gonna start from the bottom. And we're just gonna go up. My So my water section is dry at this point. So that's why we're doing this. We're gonna overlap that teal color just a little bit. And then we're gonna take our brush, clean it off, dry it off, and then do that same blend on that edge. So you should get a nice kind of blend between those two colors. And there we go, there's our sand. <laughs> we'll do one more little detail on that later, so don't worry. I did uh, yellow ochre and brown. If you just have like a regular yellow and mix some brown into it, that'll do it too. And then a bunch of water. How does the blue from the previous colors not go into the yellow brushes are in the same water? I get this question a lot and I can show you because we're taking a pause. So yes, the water in my dirty gross paint cup does look blue, right? Um, and you might guess that that water looks blue. However, if I take some of that water here and I put it on my white paper, you can see it's pretty much, there's like a little tiny tinge of blue in there, but it's pretty much still clear. And so in, when we're mixing other colors, it really does not affect um, the way that the colors look. So fun little optical illusion for you there. <laughs> I have used watercolor pencils. They're not my favorite. Um, but yeah, I have used them before. Okay. Do you sometimes draw the layout before using a brush to paint on drawings? Um, yes, sometimes it depends on the, um, painting. Sometimes if I want a style that's a little bit more like a sketch with watercolor over it, I can show you an example. I painted an iguana. <laughs> And this was like a fairly detailed pencil sketch. You can kind of see close up, closer than you ever want to be to the iguana, that there is pencil underneath. And I like fully shaded it. And I drew this as like a pencil drawing before adding watercolor. So it's a different style. But normally when I'm painting with watercolor, I do very little um, pencil sketching. Okay. All right, we have a couple other little details here. Thank you all for the questions. I will try to get back to them in a minute. Um, with our dark blue here, I'm gonna go back to this dark blue. I might water it down just a touch. And then focusing kind of back toward the horizon line, I just wanna add a few kind of thinner horizontal lines. We Maybe we deepen up the color right at the horizon line. So we go over that again, but mostly I just want like a few Kind of horizontal details focusing mostly toward the back of this and because i watered down this color it looks dark right now but it's going to dry a lot lighter so it looks dark it's just going to add a little bit of texture to it though and i'm just using fully horizontal strokes i might switch to my smaller brush actually so i can get a little bit more detail in there some shorter little dashes. And we can take that a little bit closer, but mostly we want that focused kind of toward the back here, toward the horizon line. And you can see as it dries, it is lightening up, which is a common thing with watercolor.
and you can do as much or as little on this as you'd like, however much detail you think your painting needs. Feel free to just add that. Nope, I don't really use colored pencils. Um, what would a good brush do quality-wise? Um, it just stays together a little bit better. So sometimes if you buy kind of cheaper brushes, maybe from like a craft store or something like that, they will fall apart and kind of shed hairs onto your painting. Um, and good brushes I've found, like these I've had for almost two years now. And I haven't needed to replace them and I paint with watercolor pretty often. And as long as you treat them, you know, fairly nicely, you can have them for a long time. So that's kind of the benefit of, you know, investing in better brushes. If you feel like that's something that you can do, they will last for a lot longer for you. Okay. I think we're going to leave that there. I think I'm adding too much. So I'm going to take a pause there. <laughs> let, that, let that sit. Yes, so I just added that detail kind of in the, in the top half of our water section. Where do you keep your finished art? Um, some of it I put up in my apartment. A lot of it just stays in like a box that I keep for storing my finished painting. Painting on tubed watercolors, I think they're great. I often refill um, these empty, these palettes once they get empty with uh, tubed watercolors, which dry and act just like dry watercolors. So I have no problem with that. All right, we have one more detail. If you can't resist, we can take off um, this horizon line tape because we are now done with, oh no. my paper so just do this gently try and pull at like an angle that will usually help if it starts ripping stop and go from the other side there we go okay got away with minimal <laughs> ripping there it is the ocean plans for future tiktok videos i have no idea i make them on the spot as i go i do not plan them out <laughs> Okay, yes, so the last detail that we're gonna add is kind of a little bit of more darkness in the sand, and then we're gonna put in um, some white details for the, um, the waves. So we're gonna take our sand color and just add a little bit more pigment to it. So just a little bit more yellow, a little bit more brown. We want it just a little bit darker. And at this spot where the water meets the sand, the sand will be darker, so that's where we're going to put in this darker layer. I like to kind of make it a little bit more of a wiggly line. Kind of like that. Can spread that up. We're going to cover about half of the paper with this. There we go. And again, we can blend that out a little bit. How do you dry the paints once you're done? I just leave them out and I just let them air dry. Yeah, I just leave the case open until they're dry. Okay, so we'll just blend that out just a little bit, but that'll give you the illusion that that sand is a little bit darker because it's wet. Okay, um, the last thing is I need some gouache. kind of like a, an opaque watercolor. So it's a water-based paint. You can reactivate it like you can with water, but it is opaque. So I like to use, um, this is a new brand for me. This is uh, M. Graham. You can find this on Amazon as well. Um, and I'm going to use just a little bit of this to add some waves, some wave shadows. So I'm just going to put just a touch of that on my palette. We don't need a lot. You can use, if you don't have gouache. You can use acrylic paint. You can use, um, you can use whiteout if that's all you have. Um, you can use, what else can you use? 
a white gel pen if you have that. You can try and use this white watercolor that your palette comes with if you want. It might not work quite as well, but you can just give it a try. And we're just gonna kind of add some little dots and little kind of wave details going across the front of this painting. Um, while we're doing this, I do just want to let you know that my um, Venmo is listed in my bio and my PayPal is linked in my bio. So if you'd like to leave me a little tip or a gift for today's session, that is always appreciated. Any amount that you feel comfortable with is fine. Um, and that's the way that you can do that. I do always appreciate tips. Um, my Etsy store is also linked in my bio if you'd like to check out the paintings that I'm selling. And uh, you can also follow my Instagram, which is the same handle as TikTok. I, I post um, some more kind of stuff over there and also post these uh, live sessions there too. We can use this white as well on that kind of line where we just put that dark, um, darker sand color. Kind of outline that if you want, add some lines on the sand with this too. You can be creative at as much or as low as you want. You can overdo this as well, so keep an eye out. See if you're overdoing it. And if you are, give it a give it a rest for a second. <laughs> See if you really need more. And I just think the Final little white highlights really pull it all together. So there we go. This will be added to Instagram, hopefully, in the next few hours. Um, I was telling people at the beginning of this that I've been having trouble with my Wi-Fi, so I've been having trouble uploading things. Um, these videos are an hour long, so it does take a little while, but I will do my best to have it uploaded by the end of the day today along with last week's paint sip too. Okay, I think I'm getting close to the overdoing part of this, so I'm gonna give it a rest. Put down the brush, Hannah. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so here's our final painting. And we have plenty of time, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the tape off so that you can see the tape reveal, which is always the best part. And I do appreciate you all painting with me. So again, Venmo is listed in my bio, PayPal is linked in my bio. If you'd like to leave me a tip, I do appreciate it. Um, my Etsy store is linked in my bio, along with my art supply recommendations uh, on Amazon. That gives me a little commission of those too. So if you're looking for some new art supplies and want my suggestions, that's where you can go. Um, and yeah, check out my Etsy store. And I will be doing another one of these at the usual time next weekend, Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern time. So there's that nice tape pull. <laughs> if your tape is ripping your paper, heat it up with a hairdryer first. That will help the that will help the glue in the tape release the paper. How did you get your sky so blue? I used my blue colors <laughs> in my palette. Gold gouache starfish. Oh, that's a great idea. All right. There we go. So I do hope you enjoyed this little session today. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, yeah, you can make, I might make little birds in mine later, but you can make little birds in yours if you want to right now. So there's our final painting. Yes, painter's tape is fine. Oh yeah, show both paintings. So here's the other one. They do look different. This one I was able to spend a little more time on. And also this one I painted while I was on vacation and it was a lot more humid there at that point. So it's interesting how I had more time to kind of work on this before it dried than, than on this one. But I still think this one turned out nice. I like the bottom section of this one better than the bottom section of this one. <laughs> 